Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. I am so glad you're here. The last few videos, I have been on a journey to find some new and different spring desserts uh, other than my strawberry cake and my lemon pound cake and so forth. So we're going to kind of finalize this series up today with a cake. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. If you're new here, I would love for you to hit subscribe, hit that bell notification. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. And as always, the greatest way you can support my channel is to share my videos on your social media platforms. I would greatly appreciate it. And to all my faithful viewers, welcome back. I love you all so much. Okay, we're going to hit the intro. I'll be back and we're going to make our final springtime dessert. Hey. Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car. Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is Okay, so I will say that this dessert may not be just for springtime and all of these desserts can be made at any time of the year and this one, this cake has some cinnamon in it, so it has some of the warmth flavors you would expect at the fall, but it also has a lot of summery aspects to it as well. So I'm categorizing it into my spring desserts. Also, this was requested by a viewer. Not only was it requested, but she sent me the link to the original recipe. What we're making today is a hummingbird cake. I also think the name of it springs I mean, shout spring and summers, hummingbirds. So we are making a hummingbird cake and this is actually the original cake recipe that was in the Southern Living Magazine so many years ago. So it was sent to me and um, thank you. You know who you are who sent it and we are making it today. So I'm gonna grab everything I need. I've got a lot of things prepped, but I am gonna show some other things. So hang tight, we'll be right back. Okay, so we are going to put this cake together. I'm just gonna whisk it up right here. I have most everything prepped for you guys, except for, I wanted to show you this little trick. I went in to get bananas. This recipe calls for bananas. And um, they were green as green could be. I couldn't find a ripe banana anywhere. So what I did was I came home, stuck them in a paper sack for a couple of days, and voila, we have ripe bananas. So just stick them in a paper bag and close it up. Let it sit for a day or two and they will ripen. There's something about the, the gases in there that it just ripens right up. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop up or mash up um, four bananas. You need about two cups of bananas, but I'm going to just, um, you know, kind of just do this by the number of bananas. I would say about 12, I mean 12, four medium uh, bananas. And I'm just going to kind of rough chop them. Nothing spectacular. You can mash them with a fork, whatever you want to do. Whatever's easiest. So I'm going to get these bananas mashed or chopped. I guess I'm really just kind of chopping them. But, you know, bananas are soft, so they're kind of mashing up while I'm chopping them. All right, so I'm going to do this, and we'll be back in just a little bit. I've got this clicker thing, and it's supposed to cut the camera off, but it doesn't always. So I have to go over there and cut it off. Okay, everyone. The clicker works 
turning the camera on. So anyway, we're going to put this cake together. We are going to um, just mix it right here. I'm not going to use my stand mixer or anything except for the icing. I will use that for the icing. But we're going in with three cups of all-purpose flour. I did not sift it only because um, my, oh, see, there goes my eggs. Uh, my sifter, that would have been ugly, wouldn't it? Uh, my whisk is a double whisk, and it kind of sifts it just as I whisk through there. So uh, if there was huge, if there was a lot of moisture and huge clumps, I would sift it, but I think my whisk does a good job. Okay, so two our three cups of flour, we're going in, let me check, make sure, um, a teaspoon of baking soda, and that is soda, not powder. That's what the recipe said. All right, we're going in with a teaspoon of salt. Now, normally I don't add the salt, um, but I did add it today because I'm not using any butter in the cake. Um, so I'm going to whisk that in. All right. And to that, we're going in with two cups of sugar. And I'm just going to whisk that up, get all my dry ingredients mixed up. Um, I'm going to switch my utensil over to a heavy duty spoon because we're going to mix in the other things. Okay, so let's go in with, let me, let's start with our eggs. I need a, let me grab a bowl real quick to crack them in. And I like to whisk them up a little bit. Um, especially since I'm not using a mixer. We'll break them up in this bowl. Whisk it around a little. There's one. We're going in with three eggs. And yes, I could do this all at one time, do all three eggs, but in case I got a shell in there. It's just, it's just best. I don't always follow my own best practices, but it is. And did any of y'all nurses hear that nursing term there? Best practices. <laughs> um, I don't always follow my rule, but it really is best because if you get a shell in there and can't get it out, um, and yes, using an eggshell is the best way to get it out, but if you couldn't get it out, you've messed up your whole batter. I mean, you'd probably go on and make the cake and just pray it's you that finds the shell. All right. Y'all, I have on my kitchen scarf, and it, sorry, I know that was probably loud. Um, my friend who makes these, she has actually had some health issues. So if you don't mind, would you just say a prayer for her? She's had, she has battled some health issues lately. Okay, so I'm going in with a cup and a half of oil. Now let me say, I know I have some of you guys who are like, I would never use that much oil in a cake. Okay, that's fine. And I have in some recipes like halved it, like done half butter, half oil. But the recipe specifically said not to alter the oil amount, that it, it does something to the texture and you need this oil in here. So I'm following this recipe because I've never made this cake. You know, maybe if I get used to it, I'll, I'll venture out. But um, the, it specifically said not to alter the amount of oil. So it's a cup and a half of oil. I know that's a lot. I get it. All right. So we're going in there. This do recipe doesn't have any butter, doesn't have any milk. I mean, y'all, I was supposed to put cinnamon in the dry ingredients and I forgot. So we'll put that in when I get the batter together. And I'm just mixing this up right now and getting it all stirred up. 
I'm actually going to go over here and preheat my oven real quick. I about forgot to turn that on. Let me take my necklace off because it's probably hitting my um, microphone. I know that would be loud. Okay, so to this batter, we're going to add in an 8-ounce can of pineapple, the crushed pineapple with its juices. Um, and, and it needs to be in juice, not heavy syrup. But um, I grabbed pineapple slices. So what I did was I just took the slices out and chopped them up really good and fine. And so I'm going in here with that can of pineapple that I have... So there's, there's a summer ingredient right there. All right. Now to this wonderful looking batter, we're going to add in our bananas. And I did chop mine versus mashing them with a fork um, just because I kind of wanted the little chunks to go around the cake. So, but you, if you'd rather just use a fork and mash them, I'm sure that is totally fine too. All right. Now I should have put the cinnamon in the flour and I forgot. So we're going to try to incorporate it here. It's a teaspoon of cinnamon. There is your um, fall time flavor. The recipe that I was reading was talking about it being the original Southern Living. Uh, and it was actually a lady from North Carolina who submitted that recipe. And um, <clears throat> they said they had, you know, tampered with the oil amounts and changed all that. And they said you definitely, they have done the tried and true stuff. And so I took their word for it and they said don't alter it. So I didn't alter it. All right, I believe that's good and mixed in. And so now just some vanilla. Um, it calls for a teaspoon, I think a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. Um, I'm a little heavy, let me see, I got my recipe right here. A teaspoon and a half of vanilla. I'm always a little heavy handed on my vanilla. So when I say I follow the recipe to exact, maybe not quite exact. <laughs> I just didn't measure it, I eyeballed it. And, and to me, if it goes a little over on the vanilla, I am totally fine with that. Okay, guys, there is our cake batter. I need to get my spray out to spray in my pans to spray my pans. I'm going to clean up a little bit. I'll meet you back right here. Okay, everybody, I have sprayed my three pans with the Baker's Joy, and I have evenly divided it up, the cake batter up. As evenly as I possibly could. Okay, so I'm going to stick these in a 350. Y'all, I actually forgot something. I forgot an ingredient. But thank goodness it's not one that we can, I mean, that won't be hard to fix. I forgot toasted pecans. I toasted up a cup of pecans today. So I'm actually, since I forgot it, I'm just going to take maybe a third of a cup. I'm going to sprinkle them on top to begin with. I started to pour the batter all the way out and restart. But then I thought, nah. I'll just evenly distribute them here. And I'm just going to get a fork and stir the batter around. <laughs> See, if you make a mistake, just easily fix it. I mean... Thank goodness I thought of it before the cake was done. 
before it even started cooking. I realized it. All right. Now we're ready for a 350 degree oven. Okay, everyone, the cakes are out of the oven. I have pricked them with a toothpick to make sure they're done. We're gonna let them cool for a few minutes and then I'll turn them out on a rack. In fact, I'm actually gonna set them on the rack now. Um, we'll turn them out and let them cool completely before we do the icing. It was about um, approximately, I would say 33 minutes that it stayed in my oven. Uh, I started checking it at 25 minutes and then uh, I let it stay in there about eight more minutes. Um, I may have put them in a little bit too early uh, prior to my cake, my oven being preheated only because my preheat light has gone out. <laughs> So, um, okay, we'll just wait for them to cool a little bit. Well, the cakes are out. They're cooling. They look wonderful. They look so good. And don't worry, I'm not going to cut the cake in half. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go check up my um, chocolate cake with raspberry icing. Um, I couldn't decide which type of icing to use, and I used two, and I cut the cake in half, and the cake fell. I'm not gonna cut the cake enough. So quit worrying, I'm not gonna do it. All right, so here we are working on the, oops, sorry guys, I hit you. Um, we're gonna work on, I'm scared I'm gonna spill this powdered sugar. I'm gonna lay it down and hopefully it won't spill out too much. Okay, first I gotta get the whisk attachment, but let's go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and put the cream cheese in there. This makes a lot of icing, a lot of icing. So it takes two eight ounce packages of cream cheese, two sticks of butter, two pounds of powdered sugar, and some vanilla. Okay, let me grab my whisk. All right, I'm back now. Let's go ahead and get our butter in there and give those two things a whisk. Okay, now like I said, it does call for two pounds of powdered sugar and I'm only gonna put a little in at a time. just for splatter purposes. I'll still be wearing powdered sugar by the end of the day. I've already got my shirt dirty because I forgot to put my kitchen scarf back on. This cake and icing is going to be absolutely wonderful. And I'm gonna take just a minute and scrape down the sides. Let's give it just a scrape down and then we'll do a final whisk and some vanilla. All right, let's go ahead and pour a little bit of vanilla in. You can do as much or as little as you like. All right, guys, I'm going to let that whip up and let it get good and fluffy. 
got it on my hands. Mmm. It's going to be good. All right, everybody. This icing is wonderful and fluffy. Let's give it a taste. Off my finger. Oh my goodness. That is some kind of good. Some kind of good. All right, let me grab my cakes, my cake stand. Oh, God, I hate that. Time to ice the cake. And I'm hoping and praying it turns out different than my other cake did. Oh, goodness, y'all. That was hilarious. Y'all got to go back and watch that. It is hilarious. Okay, what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of the icing down here, kind of like glue. And look, this has made tons of icing. I hope we have enough. We should. All right, I'm going to put my first layer down on this beautiful cake plate. And I'm just going to dollop some icing on here. My cake is, it is not warm, but it's not, I don't know how to describe it. It's not really cool either. And I like to just put it in the center and kind of push it out to the side. If y'all can hear my dishwasher, I apologize. Make sure my mic's on. Because if my mic's not on, <laughs> you can't hear nothing. <laughs> It won't pick up any volume at all if my mic is not on. All right, so even if it falls off the edges, I'm totally fine with that. I just want to get it in the center and push it to the edge. Now, I should have put some wax paper around here, but I didn't. Um, in fact, I can do that now. I'm just going to slide this underneath the cake a little bit. And this just helps keep your cake plate clean of icing. There we go. All right, see how easy fix that was. All right, we're going to take our next layer. And we're just going to do the same thing. Only problem here is this cake plate is tall. And I'm short. All right, so I'm just putting it in the center and pushing it to the edges. And I, I want to be generous with the icing in the center because sometimes you get a cake and there's like, was there icing in the center? And I'm bad to do that because I want to conserve it for the outside. But this is made so much, I think we'll be good. And two, if you get too much icing in the center, then your cake does slide and fall. I just heard from one of my dear friends in Idaho and she has a church there and and she met a lady and they got to talking and the lady says I watched this youtuber named the farming pastor's wife and how amazing is that that all these miles away <laughs> a friend of mine would meet somebody who watches our channel that's so cool all right, and I'm just kind of making sure everything's, you know, that we don't have the Leaning Tower of Pisa. A lot of times my ta tiered cakes can oftentimes take on the appearance that I'm trying to make it look like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. <laughs> and I'm not. That's never intentional on my part.
and I'm just putting tons of icing right up here in the center. And we're just going to kind of push it down to the sides. And it's totally okay if it goes over the sides. And my cake is sliding, so we're going to slide it back. Um, I don't have any straws, but um, that is a good way to keep your cake together is by, I don't have any skewers or straws right now. But the reason it was leaning is because I was pushing the icing. And so when that happens, you want to kind of push in the opposite direction. And I think my friend said her her friend's name. On, I don't know what her friend's name is, but um, her YouTube handle <laughs> um, was CC, I believe. So hello, CC. I'm glad you watched me. That is so cool. What an amazing story. Barbara is, which is my friend who now lives in Idaho. Man, we miss her and her family. She did our Wednesday night meals. And I did do them, um, but I found that there was other people that had talent. And so now what I do is, you know, I'll do them here and there, but I'll just coordinate. I'm kind of over them. Like I'll coordinate now who does do them. Um, like I'll go around and say, hey, you want to host one of our Wednesday night meals? That way I'm not having to do all of them. And people aren't getting tired of the same old things that I would normally do. So they get a little different perspective. Like Maria, we had Maria do it one time. She can't do it anymore because she works now. Um, she's gone back to work. But, um, oh, they loved it when Maria did the meals because, um, you know, we had something different. And um, so everybody loved it when Maria did the meals. All right. I know y'all are wondering what in the world am I doing? But look, I'm icing the cake. <laughs> and so far it is standing up. All right. Now I wish I had one of those. Let's push it this way. It's leaning a little bit this way. Because I just iced it. All right. I wish I had one of those scraper things. All right, guys, I'm just going to finish icing this and working on this and making sure it isn't sliding. And we will be back. Remember, I'm not a cake decorator. It's not about being pretty, okay? We're not about trying to get this pretty. We just want to get it to where it stands up and it tastes good. So I'm going to keep on and we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, everybody. So like I said, I am not a cake decorator. I don't know how. So with that being said, the easiest thing for me to do is to make it look messy, like on like it's intentional that I'm wanting it to look messy because that's the only thing I can do. Got to make sure my mic's on. Yep. 
Yep. Okay, so I just take another offset spatula and we're just gonna give it peaks. If you saw in my intro, I have a chocolate cake that just has peaks on it. And they look like they're supposed to be there. Well, they're not. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess they are because this is what I'm doing now. I'm giving this like a messy cake look and doing it intentionally. And I'm just laying the knife and picking it up, laying it, picking it up, laying it, picking it up. And it's just giving it some peaks. And yes, the cake is leaning a little bit, I know. I get in a hurry and I wanna ice it and I probably haven't let it cool long enough. But, so I'm just giving this cake some messy peaks and I'm talking and I'm in the same rhythm that I'm doing it. And so anyway, now I'm gonna stick this in the refrigerator and let it solidify a little bit or harden back up so it'll quit leaning. Quit leaning! Now, you can also, I didn't toast them, but I have some pecan halves right here that we could um, decorate the top with. Well, they're kind of broke up, but we can, you know, dot some pecans on here and there. Um, they're not, like I said, they're not toasted. I didn't toast them. But you can decorate it any way you want to. I'm all about the eating of the cake, not the decorating of the cake. Um, I, I need, I, I, I would love to decorate and I need to take some classes. I really do. I need to take some classes. That's all I'm going to do. But um, we're going to put this in the refrigerator. And I'll bring you back. Oh, let's take the. Now you'll really see how bad it's leaning <laughs> when I take these out. There you go. And look, my cake plate is all nice and clean, except right there. But we can fix that. Okay, going in the refrigerator. We'll see you back in just a little bit. Are y'all ready for this? I've got Brian's milk out. He's come in, but look, take a look at them. I hope I don't hit it with the lid as I look at that. What kind of cake is it, Mom? It is a hummingbird cake. Hummingbird. You've never Humming, made this? Never made this. Does this make you go hum? Hum. hum. I probably have a wrong kind of knife, but it's the one I grabbed. You want a different knife? No, I'm good. You sure? Yeah, I'm good. Why is it called a knife if it starts with a K? Knife. 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 Right, hey, guys. did you did you guys see that? Wait, uh, you gotta get this. Okay, here we go. Gotta get this. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's got nuts in it. Oh, my goodness. All right, we got to pause and get a picture. Okay, everybody, look at that. Look at that cake. You can see the banana, the pineapple, the nuts. And look at that thick coat of icing it's got on it. Two forks. Glass of milk. And him, a partial glass of milk. Okay. Wish I had some coffee. All right, you go first. You gotta get some of the icing. I did. I got some. Oh, okay. Try to get some right here. That icing is like I left the bowl over there, and I'll go dig in every now and then. <laughs> That's really nice. <laughs> I knew when he was waiting, and he was shaking his head. All right, I gotta take a bite. Restaurant good. I mean, that is. That's a five dollar piece of cake at a restaurant right there. Mm. That is delicious. That is really good. Mm, it's like a little bit of banana bread. It's got cream cheese and icing. Oh, mm hmm It's a little bit of banana bread, a little bit of, I don't know, it's just really good. That is, that is delicious. Mm hmm The nuts, 
Charlene, thank you, girl. This is really This good. is for you. <laughs> but thank you. I love it. I had had hummingbird cake before, but I'd never made it. And I really couldn't remember if I liked it. I've never had it. Oh, my goodness. That is so good. Superb. All right, guys. You got to make this. It was really easy. Just took a little bit of prep work by toasting your pecans. And don't forget to put them in the cake. And chopping up your bananas. I mean, it, everything else was just kind of done to go. I didn't even have to get my stand mixer out except for the icing. How easy is that? Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching the Farm and Pastors Play. Stay tuned until tomorrow. And I plan on rating the videos as well as sharing some of my favorite cookbooks with you. Um, but I'm going to rate the desserts that we've done over the past few days. So, all right. Thank you for watching. Remember, the grease is hot enough. You can fry anything. Bye, y'all.